Alcohol Beyond This Point Podcast. This isn't two podcasters talking business. This is two business guys trying to podcast. Part of having a Twitter verification is you can't impersonate anybody else. Okay. So every so often, somebody will sacrifice their Twitter verification by impersonating somebody. Okay. So like one time, uh, I think it was like someone like changed their profile picture to Trump and changed their name to Donald J. J. Trump. And so they have a verification tick. And then started tweeting like, all I care about is fucking killing black people. And like, that's why I'm making these policies and just started tweeting unhinged shit. Right. And then when you look at it, it's a verified account of Donald Trump. Right. And you're like, oh no. (laughs) Right. So, so, and, but you lose your verification. You can never get it back. Um, so they call it like blue check sacrifice or something like that. And the one recently somebody did, uh, they changed their, (laughs) they changed it to like Italian Elon Musk. (laughs) And they were just like tweeting like up. And it's just like a Photoshop picture of Elon Musk with like a mustache. Nice. And it's just like, oh, I I exploit uh, I exploited uh, apartheid. <laughs> like all this, and it's just like a bunch of stuff like that. And then he lost his verification. <laughs> Fantastic. So shout out that shout out Italian Elon Musk. I hope it was worth it. Yeah. And then there's a, <laughs> I don't know how it exactly happened, but uh, the Rainbow Fish account, the official Rainbow Fish account mm-hmm. on Twitter. I guess I think what happened was. Um, they fired the social media manager and he still had the Twitter on his phone. He just stole it. Right. Um, because some, some person like tweeted a picture of their kid that drew a rainbow fish and they're like, Hey, my, my kid drew rainbow fish. Like, what do you think at the official verified account? And the official verified account responded, that fucking sucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, so follow rainbow fish on Twitter. Cause he's fucking unhinged and it's so funny. I hope they haven't changed the password. Well, they, I still follow them, but they're just not verified anymore. <laughs> but ah. yeah. Um, anyway, well, welcome to Alcohol Beyond This Point, the podcast where we talk um, about rainbow fish we, and we, Twitter. We just get drunk and then rant and then um, wait, what else do we do? It's about it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's also a business uh, podcast. This is uh, episode. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Take two. This is episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, this fuck. One. You got me now. <laughs> Take three. Take three. This is... A... <laughs> okay, sorry. Take 14. This is... A... <laughs> take 14... 47. 14,447. This is episode 69. Um, nice. Thank you. Uh, there's absolutely nothing funny about this number. Nothing at let's, all. Let's move on. How was your week, Tyler? Um... It's pretty good. I'm I'm going through like a weird second phase of seasonal depression. Um, so I've been, I never left. So I've been on a job for about seven, six, seven days, and in that seven days, I've seen like nice weather. So the street has been like nice weather, and then it was like whiteout blizzard to the point where we had to like leave early to make sure we could actually get home. Uh, and then it was so it went from clear to like snow covered. And then it like melted, and then it was clear, and then it was slushy, and then it was ice covered, and then it was clear again, and then it was snow covered. Now it's clear again, and felt like a spring day. It's actually really nice. That's day. seven. That's the last seven days, and yeah. it's uh, really been tugging on my heartstrings, and I don't feel good. Do you really think you want to live somewhere where it's not exciting? No, I mean I bitch, but I don't. You know what I mean? I, I like, feel like I would get bored of just like every morning it being just fucking the same. Nice and sunny outside. Nice and sunny outside. I feel like I wouldn't like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'd feel about it. It's well, just it, it. It just wouldn't. I like I've I've been you know whatever I spent. I got to spend a fall in Cleveland. And I was like, oh, this is what fall is supposed to be like. This is what fall is in the movies. It's like two months long and it's nice and it's mild and it's warm, but it's not too hot. Like this is great. And then snow falls right before Christmas. I'm like, this is fucking fantastic. But it like it also felt really alien, right? Yeah. So I don't know. There's something to be said about the chaos that f- that is familiar. Well, I definitely like um, well-defined seasons. Yeah. Like I think that's um, there's a lot to be said. Like I don't know how I'd feel if it was just like Florida, like same every day. Yeah. No, I I wouldn't be a fan. Yeah. Rainy season and hot season. Yeah. No, I don't think I would be a fan of that. The best, like I think the. M- warmest i would go would be yeah just kind of midwest slightly warmer than we have now 
longer summers. What's there on the other side winters. of the ocean? Because I would never live in America. I would. They can't fucking. You couldn't fucking pay me enough to live in America. A lot of European countries, obviously, yeah. very mild, right? I think like England. A lot of EU countries. England might mean like. I remember watching Peaky Blinders for the first time, and like a year has gone by, and they're still wearing the same overcoats. England, I, England's great if you remember, like wearing overcoats and rain. Well, yeah, well, and I remember I'm like, how fucking does it never get warm if they're wearing overcoats? And I'm like, oh no, it just doesn't. <laughs> like, no, it never really the gets. The hottest it ever gets in Birmingham is like 17. Yeah, it never gets really warm and never gets really cold. So it's yeah, it's like overcoat and trench coat and raincoat, and that's what you wear. I could go for that. I would rather go for, um, like a Switzerland. I don't know. You know what? Um, I am not a poor little baby, so I can just fly other places when I feel like it. I mean, that's really that's really the ideal. You know, be like, be able to just fuck off when you're tired of the weather. Right? Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's a better. I don't know. I like. Yeah. I don't Ma- know. Manitoba is always going to be home for me. It's always going to be my home base. Yeah. Uh, but I do aspire to be able to move around. And that's really all I really, that's all I care about. Because if I can, I mean, obviously we did our little Mexico trip, but if, if I can spend like a, a month of winter, not in winter time, or specifically like this time of spring where it just feels like it's dragging on for fucking ever. Um, yeah, I'd love to. Well, this is, I've been saying this for a long time, but between COVID and us being broke, we could never pull it off. But like, I'm the, my, my plan is every February, I'm just going to leave yeah, and do something. So speaking of fuck you money. Um, just because everyone is, no, not because everyone is, because it's, it's, it's really fucking interesting to me. I think this might be actually a pretty functional debate topic for us, but the idea of Musk buying Twitter. Yeah. Uh, so where do you stand on that? We haven't really talked about it. Um, yeah, I don't care. Um, as an, as a frequent Twitter user as well. I am a frequent Twitter user. I actually spend a lot of fucking time on Twitter. <laughs> so, yeah. um, Twitter and TikTok pretty much I spend all my time on. But, um, yeah, I like, I don't care. I, I think like to be the cliche libertarian argument, like, I don't care what billionaires do with their money. Yeah. Um, if he wants to buy the bird app, that's fine with me. Um, I don't think there's any, like, there's a huge precedent since society was formed that the rich and powerful control the media. Yeah, that's always been that way. It's, like, it's the, the only like, thing, the only thing that's new is the fact that people believe that it's not. Yeah, it's not like this is some great offense to, like, society. Like, oh, a billionaire controls the forum in which we. It's like, yeah, that's how it's always been. <laughs> like, look up the fucking history of every newspaper, every fucking news channel. Like, it's all been rich and powerful people from the fucking dawn of time, right? Yeah. You couldn't say anything. The fucking king would have you killed. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Um, I don't see anything morally wrong. Um, people go, well, if he has a, if he has $45 billion to spend on this, why doesn't he have money to spend on taxes? Everyone knows where I fucking fall in taxes. <laughs> so, like... And also, not, yeah. Also, people are like, $44 billion could solve fucking the world hunger and it's like why doesn't the government do that then you yeah. know what the fucking u.s government gives the pentagon like yeah if we could just solve if everyone if that's what everyone really cared about why would why don't you just put up a a, a gofundme for 10 billion dollars and then because everyone knows better they'll just fund it and then problem solved yeah like if and it that... was that if it, if it was that easy then people would have done it and I'm not saying it's not that easy. Like, why can't you just give everyone food? Like, it doesn't seem that hard. Like, I feel like we could pull it off. But nobody in power cares. Yeah, no, I think... And why is it up to Elon Musk to give a shit? Yeah. And not the U.S. government or, or any government. I think he had a great comment in one of his speeches recently. He's like, well, um, I think what the people are asking, like, oh, what do you think the impacts of, like, this is going to be on your on your life or your reputation and so on. He's like, well, you know, the next time something goes wrong, he's like, hundred percent, it'll be my fault because I bought this, because I bought this company. He's like, it'll, it, it's going to be my fault. I don't know what it is yet, but <laughs> for sure it'll be my fault. And he just kind of laughs and it's like, well, yeah, it's, I understand he's an incredibly rich and powerful person. He can do a lot, but also he is just one person. Yeah. 
and your money can only get you what you want as long as the people you're giving it to do what you want like yeah also, i don't know of, i don't he doesn't ha he has a lot of power but also he doesn't have that much power or control it's, also a lot of people think that he just like spent 44 billion in cash on it no i think he's spending around I, I, as far as forbes said he didn't spend anything he got a loan leveraging the tesla stock that he earn that he owns like three to one or something right well that that's what that. he's putting in and then morgan stanley is putting in like the other 60 percent. yeah so something like that yeah so he's not liquidating anything no so it's like because like i've seen a lot of like fucking liberal pages post like all these fucking people that are like well elon musk can't just pay more taxes because he's illiquid now he just spent 44 billion cash on a fucking twitter app of... yeah that's because they hear uh, he bought Twitter in an all cash offer. Yeah, which but they don't... just means you're getting money for the stocks. The stock, yeah. not that you're getting actual cash. Like it doesn't matter where the money came from. Yeah, it, people are really dumb. Like if you're Elon Musk, you can walk into a bank and they'll be like, "Oh, hello, Elon Musk," and you go, "Hello, can I loan unlimited money at like point zero percent interest?" And they're like, "Yeah, that that sounds about right. Thanks, Elon Musk." Like, yeah, you know. Just because these fucking, these liberals that have like a thousand dollars in assets can't do that doesn't mean that fucking rich people can't do it. And if we want to have the argument that the society that's set up so he can just do that is corrupt, that's a different argument entirely. Yeah, but, but everyone loves that part but him spending money on something he wants is the I problem have, yeah i have no fucking issue with that well i'm 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 firmly on the side of the fact that twitter uh shouldn't has no business being a public company um which yeah i fully believe that and even like dorsey jack dorsey the founder uh was like yes t the big bringing twitter public was the biggest mistake i ever made was yeah, one well, of, one and of he's not, he, he doesn't even want to be involved anymore no, he's not involved anymore yeah well i think he still owns some of it but yeah yeah so well, I guess he, not anymore. He'll be cashed out. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So he's going to be off scot free. It's going to be off the public market. And huge payday for him. Yeah, he's going to be. Yeah, he's basically going to have everything liquidated. I think he owns like six percent. Okay, so he'll get six percent of forty three billion. Yeah. In cash and yeah. pay taxes on it. Yeah. So good for him. Yeah. But I think yeah, taking a, like from business wise, made a lot of sense. But that's not really what I give a fuck about because the ethics of can you buy a business shouldn't be in question because, yes, you can. Yeah, of course. Um, and can or should Elon Musk do it? Why the fuck not? Because I guess, like, if, if you're saying Elon Musk shouldn't be able to buy a business, then it's like, then who is allowed to buy a business? Yeah, then you should be, the, are you against the idea of billionaires in general? It's like, which, well, a lot of people are. Which a lot of, th yeah, a lot of people are. It's which, like, fair. Okay, so then the alternative is this is now a nationalized asset? And we trust a bunch of other billionaires that are elected, kind of. Yeah. Like elected oligarchs. Anyways. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi's worth two hundred million dollars. Like, yeah. Fucking like, I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it, they're all bastards. But what I, I'm more so interested in is what do you think he will change about Twitter, and also what would you change about Twitter? To make it as, you know, from his perspective, he's a free speech, quote, absolutist. Absolutist, yeah. Um, Which, I mean, we've discussed before, and I, I am a lot in that camp. I think I'm I'm in that camp as well. Uh, give me a little bit more. You're good. Um, I think I'm in the camp of um, free speech absolution. I think we, we've talked about that on this, that, like, you have to let people debate their bad ideas. Yeah. Like, um, what is he going to change? I'm not a hundred percent sure. God, I hope he unbans Trump. Um, I, Trump said he wouldn't come back because he has Truth Social now. But uh, but will he actually stick to his word? Probably not. Yeah, because he'll. Yeah, oh my God, I hope he un unbans Trump. Because um, if he unbans Trump and Trump starts using Twitter. Trump sinks his own social media company, which is fucking hilarious, <laughs> which he absolutely will because he does not have the self-control. No. Yeah. He'll get more. If he gets more reactions on Twitter than he does on truth, then he'll move to Twitter. All he, right. He, surely. I, okay. I will bet you, I don't know if you're going to take this bet. Um, I will bet you a two six of something that Trump is back on Twitter before the 24 election. 
like I kind of I'm inclined to agree with you. <laughs> yeah, so, I figured you wouldn't like, take the I figured you wouldn't take the bet. I hope, like God, I hope he is right. Like, sure, like that's that's the one thing. Like, okay, I don't know what Elon wants to do with the platform. Like, it seems like he just wants to leave the platform mostly how it is. Well, I think one of his big things is he wants to uh, get rid of the bots and really kind of get that out of the conversation because the bots and the trolls and the state actors that just can make those bots and fucking just spread crazy amounts of disinformation. I mean, it happens a lot more so on Facebook than Twitter, but it does happen a lot on Twitter. Yeah. And he really wants to handle that. Okay. Which is, um, he, I think, kind of leads to the process of like verify every user. Okay. So that was, that's one of the things that might change dramatically about uh, Twitter. Like you just mentioned, if you impersonate anybody, you lose your verification forever. Yeah. That might change to either you're verified or um, you lose Twitter forever. Like I don't you know just, if I like that. Either you are verified or you can't use the service. I don't know if I like that though. Cause like there's a bunch of gimmick Twitter accounts and stuff. That, well, like... yeah, maybe, but then it's like that this is stated to be like, this is a, a page for whatever this is a meme page this is a whatever page okay and sure that's fine but like um yeah i mean i guess you gotta draw the line of some some well, people want to be anonymous i don't know it's the internet like yeah i guess but i mean if you're well i know on facebook um if you put po- because i because i've gotten reported a few times from posting ridiculous troll things uh they do make you like send a picture of your id in yeah but it's not you can still have like you don't have to have any pictures of you public you don't have to have anything you can use a fake name and stuff like that but as long as facebook knows you are in fact real right like on the back end yeah so and, but they don't make that information public yeah so maybe there's an element of that i don't know yeah but if what you, I think the benefit of getting rid of trolls and troll farms that are, you know, state backed is probably generally a good move well, for social media. It's because also it, like it's one of the most toxic things about it. It's also it's funny that like Twitter now like marks like Russian affili- state affiliated like actor and like, yeah, you know, like shit like the Chinese affiliated media, like all that. But they don't mark like Anderson Cooper as being American yeah, as, so, like yeah, Anderson you know, Cooper, also known as you know Vanderbilt Vander, associate. Yeah. Like they don't mark that as like state associated, even though yeah. he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just like there's a lot of double standards, double standards, American exceptionalism that goes on on uh, on. Well, I think everywhere, but uh, yeah, um, yeah. So what what is he going to change? I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. I don't know how much. Like, I think as, as I, and granted, I haven't like dug super far into it, but as far as I can tell, like he thinks it's a good platform and that's why he wants it. Yeah. No, he wants so he to, he doesn't want to change a ton. About he wants that to protect, he wants to protect it and preserve it. Yeah. And kind of like the way it was, I guess, kind of discussed on, uh, on this news newscast I listened to this morning was he wants to bring it back to kind of how people used to think about social media okay. back in the early 2010s when it was very altruistic and it's like oh this is going to become the new town square where we can like hash out ideas and really kind of speak uh, you know have proper public discourse now it's just like people fucking raging at each other and getting more inflamed and more well, divided and he was pissed off about the Babylon Bee thing what was that so the Babylon Bee is a satire site they're like, um, like the onion. Okay. Um, but very right leaning. So they always make a bunch of like transphobic jokes and right. stuff like that. Right. And they got banned from Twitter for making, I think it was a transfer. They like misgendered somebody repeatedly. Right. So they got banned for, um, Twitter's anti-harassment, uh, terms of service. Right. And Elon didn't like that. He was very vote. He's like, oh, this is not a good, like, I, I don't think this ban should, this isn't legitimate. Right. It's a bad precedent to set. Like making a joke shouldn't get you banned right. from the town square. Yeah. Like, even if you make a bad joke, you shouldn't be banned. And for the record, I don't know if that's necessarily my stance. Because in the... In the metaphor of the town square, yeah. if you make a really shitty joke and enough people think you're a piece of shit for it, they'll throw you, they will throw you out of the town square or beat you up, but you yeah. can't... Like, what's the online equivalence? I guess blocking people. 
I guess you can block people, but like I, I saw <laughs> this. What is it like? Online citizen of the what? Whatever. There's a fucking really far left account, World Citizens or something. That's like I think they're a media organization, but whatever. They're blocked by Elon, so they're like some free speech absolutist blocking us, and then people were dunking on them, being like. Yeah, free speech means I have to let you say dumb things to my face all day. <laughs> like, yeah. you're allowed to block people. Yeah. Like, he just doesn't want you deplatformed. Right. Right? Like, but, like, blocking is is a perfectly, is a perfect, like, is, is a function of this. It's a valid way to handle somebody. You can just not talk to someone. Yeah, exactly. You can opt out, right? That's a part of free speech is, like, do you see I, that, I'm free to not listen. Do you see that block, Black Mirror episode with the blocking? I think so. They, like, you, bl- they block you in real life and it's right. like you can't see right. or talk and like it's just, fucking trippy, just man. fuzzy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I think like as far as billionaires buying things with their billions, I'm okay with that. As far as um, Twitter now being owned by Elon Musk, I'm also okay with that. I don't think it's going to really affect the day-to-day use of of the uh, of the platform at all yeah and the, the the people that are mad about this are also like not mad about the fact that the control of ultra wealthy over like virtually every other part of their life well yeah well, they're not mad at um what's his name owning cnn or the fact that zuckerberg still has total control over uh, <laughs> face, facebook whatsapp and instagram like he still is um He's an exceptional case because he's he still owns majority yeah. of he has controlling stake of Facebook, which yeah. is incredible for the size of the company that it yeah, is. Yeah, because even even before Jack Dorsey like got rid of his shit, he owned like ten percent. Yeah. So like um Zuck can Bezos own, owns sixteen percent of Amazon. Yeah. Like And Zuck owns more than fifty yeah. percent of Facebook or of Meta. And so he can just veto everything. Like well, anything that he wants goes. Yeah. Well, I guess, like, I, I said it yesterday, like, um, I think a lot of, especially liberals that are mad at Elon Musk, like, this is the thing they're obsessing about now, are just, like, so, like, that's, they want you to obsess about it. Yeah, because those liberals are, they love Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. But they want, like, you're not, you're not focusing on the revolution if you're fucking mad about Elon Musk buying Twitter. Yeah. Like, it's completely irrelevant. It's not going to affect anyone's life. Well, I mean, hopefully you don't eat those words, but yeah, I, I will. Yeah, maybe I'll happily eat them, but I don't know. Yeah, I like to. I like to believe that he's like broadly um, doing better things than most people in his position. I have like he does kind of have like that outsider vibe, although he's definitely not. Well, he's like an autistic like boomer, but that's fucking half the billionaires. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, that like you're allowed to be an autistic boomer. I don't know. Like people are always like, I don't know. I, I think he's genuinely trying to do good things for the most part. Um, I think what makes him different is he's just a visible and accessible person, and people know what he's up to. He like responds to people on Twitter. Yeah. So most like half the billionaires in America you've never heard of, right? Probably ninety ninety percent of the billionaires you've never even heard of. And if you walked right into them, you wouldn't know. And they could be incredibly powerful and have more control over your life than Musk does. And you wouldn't fucking know. Like, there's that degree of wealth and power. But, like, he has fame and notoriety and, like, he's got fandom. Like, the guy's going on on stage like a rock star. Yeah. yeah, And that's, like... That's that doesn't come around very often where the world's richest man is also also famous is also like rock star. Yeah. Has the rock star vibe around him. Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's fucking weird. It is weird, actually. Yeah. What do you think that it like? Do you think that that's like glorifying capitalism? No, I I think it's more than that. Like I said, if it was just the money, like I think then we will know Bill Gates was never this. No. But everyone knows like Bill Gates is a jobs. Jobs was up there. Yeah. Steve Jobs was up there for sure, but he was also, he was just singularly focused on Apple. If Jobs also, I mean, he had Pixar as well, but if Jobs got into electric cars successfully. Which he very like, well could have. Maybe he, he maybe he got into, like, what if, imagine the Steve Jobs 
of you know the 2000s when he was at his peak um, today today but in the space race like cause and just fucking well, killing it yeah imagine he walks out on fucking stage with his fucking turtleneck and goes everyone's so he's like the only way to launch a rocket rocket fuel right we've known this for decades since the world wars rockets rocket fuel that makes sense or does it <laughs> Into yeah, rocket, fireworks. Rocket <laughs> shoots off behind him. I just shot that rocket with water, and then it says "rocket water" on the fucking thing. <laughs> Crowd goes crazy, and then it's like per- stage goes black. It says "rocket water" on the screen, and then it goes "I rocket water." <laughs> We've taken I rocket. Your phone can now launch a rocket. <laughs> yeah. No, there would be, there definitely would be some <laughs> shit like that, like colonization of Mars, but sexy and actually really fun. Nobody likes these Mars pods. We've reinvented the Mars pod. <laughs> it even sucks your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's going crazy. <laughs> um, Christ, I miss Steve Jobs, honestly. Yeah, that'd be. I mean, the guy's a psychopath, but yeah, but so we, is lo- we loved him. <laughs> so is everyone. He was ours. Oh, and you know what's funny? Maybe it's like the whole. You don't want to, you either die or let you sell, like let yourself become a villain kind of thing. Yeah. Like I think that even like people on the left have a pretty decent opinion of Steve Jobs. Yeah, he died a hero. Even though it's like well documented that he was a piece of shit to his employees. To and everyone. He would, like, well, yeah, everyone. But he would like mentally abuse his employees to try and get the best performance out of them. Yeah. Like that's well documented, right? Yeah, he was a fucking wrecking ball. And the fact that I honestly, obviously I didn't really know anything back when this was all happening, but I I genuinely thought that um, Apple wasn't going to do great. I mean, a lot of people thought this, that like after he died, that uh, Tim Apple wouldn't have <laughs> taken taken the reins and just done so well with it. But he's done exceptionally well. Yeah. I, I, like, yeah. like the, I think it's... Um, it's considered the most most successful CEO takeover, like in history. Yeah, is Tim Cook. Doesn't like Apple have more liquid cash than like the U.S. reserves? Yeah, something <laughs> crazy like that. Apple has enough liquidity to buy uh, Meta and Snapchat and Alphabet. And have enough money left over to wipe out the national debt of Brazil. <laughs> That's how much cash they have. Yeah, it's it's literally insane. <laughs> like, and that was I saw that two years ago. Aren't That's they, before they became a trillion dollar company. But now they're like now with inflation so high, you'd think they're probably spending that money. Well, they don't have it in like cash, cash, cash and cash equivalents. They have in liquid assets. Yeah. Or yeah, easily. No, li- but I think liquidity. they do have like three hundred billion dollars in a bank account. Probably. I'm pretty sure. Probably, like, yeah. Yeah. Just to, you know, pay the bills. Yeah, fuck it. Like, their campuses are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, working for Apple would be... Uh, so, one of my good friends is moving to Austin, and um, he's talking about being just in the airport in Austin, and he's like, just the conversations you hear, he's like, when you're in Winnipeg, people are fucking bitching about the potholes and stuff, you know, like us. <laughs> small plebs. Small brain plebs. True. And... uh He's like, when you're in the fucking Austin airport, you're hearing people talk about Web 3.0. You're hearing them talk about AI. You're, they're talking about fucking space travel because you have Oracle, you have SpaceX, you have Tesla, you have... My um, uncle worked for Larry Ellison, uh, Oracle. Yeah, you have all these incredible companies there that are just starting to headquarter. I think Apple's opening up a new campus there. And it's just, it's growing, it's booming. That's a nice boot. I just showed him a uh, boot with the Texas flag on it that my uh, friend got me when he was in Texas, and it has a Made in China sticker on the bottom. That's the most American thing I've seen all day. Correct. Anyway, we're going to uh, go here into the segment that we call Shot Caller, the part of the show where you, the audience, can pick the uh, shot that we take on Shot Caller. Um, Today we're taking a shot of triple sec because I didn't want to stand up. Thank you, Laziness, for sponsoring this episode. She. Almost made you spew that one. <coughs> Got him. 69. Nice. 
Um, I want to move to Texas. No, <laughs> I legitimately want to go to Texas. Well, we can go. I would never live in America. There's there's nothing you can say to convince me. I don't want to participate in that society. No, I don't think I could either. It's like, it's funny to it's 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 <laughs> it's fun to walk through. It's like yeah. looking at a petri dish. It's like it's going like, to the zoo. Yeah. Like Yeah, that's a better it, analogy. It's like going this, to the zoo. There's this no there's no way. I just I just there's no way. It's like all the memes and all the stereotypes you see in the movies and you're like, "Oh, oh yeah, that." <laughs> yeah. It's like my fa- one of my favorite days in Cleveland when I was just fucking around and um like in the bad part of East Cleveland, which is saying something. <laughs> um, and there was just a roving gang of like four wheelers and dirt bikes, like all unlicensed vehicles. And there's like 50 of them. And they're just like, rah, 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 like doing wheelies and Wait, shit. And just what, what were they around. like? <laughs> okay. Absurd. And I'm like, the, of course, they. I, and I was uh, talking about the homeowner that I was there to see. Like, oh, yeah, you know, it's Sunday. They always do this at about this time on, you know, Sundays. They just go rip around. Like, God damn. Yo, for that looks like so much fun. Yo, for a rip, are you, bud? Exactly. And the, obviously the cops don't do shit. Or may, maybe they try. They occasionally will shoot a couple of them for fun. But they're out next Sunday. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's like, wow. I've seen that on, like, um, what's, a, what's that Denzel Washington, like, cop movie, uh, Training Day? Right. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Yeah, like uh, you watch movies like that, you're like, I oh, don't know where the ghettos are that. Like, th- like that's just Hollywood. It's like, no, no, they they really do be like that. Yeah, I see it in. Uh, there's a bunch of like ASAP Rocky music videos where they're on like shit like that. Yeah, background. exactly. Or it's like, yeah, there's a fucking rap video. It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, this happens. We're just ignorant of it because we're in Winnipeg. Thanks, and Winnipeg is like a shithole compared. To, like, it is actually a shithole because yeah. Cleveland is a shithole, but they've got culture and history why don't we have any culture and history because cleveland's older than canada for oh, one yeah. we haven't been around long enough oh yeah but also it's hard to make a culture out of like something so amorphous and undefined as winnipeg winnipeg isn't anything it's just a fucking hole in the dirt it's like it's 13 towns that we just smashed together yeah. Built, built a bunch of bridges and then said, this is a city now. Yeah, imagine... Yeah, you take 13 prairie towns, you smash them together, you add an IMAX theater, and that's Winnipeg. <laughs> and a Mercedes dealership. True. Don't get me started. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, Mercedes dealership. Is, um, I don't want to make a judgment because if they... If they... Come make, through. If they make this all right, then I don't want to have shit-talked them. But let's just say... But the I, journey has not been great. Yeah, let's just say right now... And for the last maybe nine months, I have been very non-happy with their service and performance. Yeah. But they claim to be going through a transitional period right now where they fired everyone and they claim to be fixing it. But, and like mm-hmm. 2018, I had a very, very good experience with, with them. Like purchasing, service, all that was very, very good. Above average, I would say. And it's just the last, like, through COVID, last, like, two years, but then for sure the last nine months, it's gotten, like, it's fallen off a cliff. Yeah, whenever they tell you we're fixing it, I don't know. Like, you you can't suck for that long and just say we're fixing it. Well, I guess that's a good topic, actually, is so these, these, like, a corporation like Mercedes-Benz has a lot of clout. Yeah. Right? They don't need my business. Like if I, if I piss off a few of my big customers, like at my winery and they shit talk me to other customers, I could very well go out of business. Yeah. And not that that makes me treat all my customers well. I just like to treat my customers well because they give me money. So I'm happy to treat them well. But I give Mercedes like obviously a lot of money for me, like tens of thousands of dollars. It's not a lot of money for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm just low priority and they don't give a shit. Yeah. You got one van. You're not Amazon. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, name a fleet that buys 200 vehicles. Yeah. But I think it's just a bad practice. Like, like, tell me if you agree with me, but I think there's definitely like corporations out there, like big corporations that are like, 
yeah, don't waste your time with the fucking bottom 15% of our customers. Yeah. They don't deserve, like, they, they, we could piss them all off and it doesn't, we can give them all bad service and it doesn't fucking matter. Because I know the, the meme is the customer's always right and they make you, like, but I, I, I have a feeling, like, there's big corp, like, Walmart being like, ah, just fuck them. Yeah, absolutely. I think, well, maybe not Walmart because all their customers are little people. That's kind of their business, right? But bad example. I was just I'm trying thinking, to think of a giant. I think like Morgan Stanley. Yeah. Okay. Where yeah, yeah. it is, it's like a thing to be. You can't even get a meeting. Well, my bank. Right. Yeah. I've talked about this all the time. They fucking my business. My business bank. Fucking jerk you around. Well, they like yeah they they like, my account manager, was basically like yeah you're not big enough for me, just call the one eight hundred number. Yeah. And they like they made me take a GIC like a they made me put a security down to get a credit card, and then at the end of the term of the security they wouldn't give it back to me and they still haven't for the record, like, just shit like that where they're like oh you're you're not credit worthy I'm like fuck you I've been paying the credit card on time for fucking five years like, yeah, I don't know, it's probably like a sub level policy that's come through that they just have to do but then like i don't i, can, I don't go anywhere else because all the banks suck yeah no they are they're all <laughs> shit but i mean we also have some of the best banking just banking in general is shitty which is why everyone hates jewish people anyway <laughs> on that note you want to take another shot <laughs> yeah um if we take a shot under 35 percent or uh, sorry under 40 percent then we have to take two on shot callers so this is our second shot cheers Ain't that fun. Gross, dude. Huh? David. Ew, David. I wish you could see the look that Tyler's giving me right now. I, I'm just I trying to make you say something. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Whoever talks first. Why loses. haven't you cracked either of your beers? You're making, making me. A, you're making me. A, Jesus, you're still working on that. No. What's happened to you? It's like I don't even know you anymore. <laughs> it's like um. I used to have to fucking push myself to keep up with you. Now, <laughs> now I'm out drinking you. What the hell, dude? Um, just like uh. My my roommate, my old roommate Mitchell, who we're still friends with. Well, when I am <laughs> when I moved kidding, in, love you, Mitch. When I moved in with him, what four years ago? Yeah, I said, and he just reminded me of this the other day. I said something along the lines of, "Oh, I don't give a fuck if you party. I I sleep through everything. Fuck it, whatever." And now he brought it up because I'm complaining about my current roommate bringing people over when I had to work in the morning, and then, like kept waking me up. Yeah. And Mitch is like, what happened to you? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, Get it all. Like, just like the same thing that just you just said. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. It's fine. It's I'm fine. Either, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't actually hold it against you. See, you know, but you know what the worst thing is? I guess I'm like, you, one could call it maturing. Right. But I also don't like it. No. You know what I mean? Like some people are like, well, yeah, I can't go out and party anymore. Fuck, I'm not a little kid. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could go out and party all night. <laughs> like, you know, it's like yeah. I'm getting mature and I fucking hate myself. Yeah, I, I don't like being tired all the time. Like, I work pretty hard. Like, today I work just over 11 hours, physical labor. And, yeah, I'm like, I'm pretty tired. I, um... Like, why... when, when you get home, you don't have, like, a lot of energy or initiative to just yeah. go do things and knock well, things off your to-do list like it's it's fucking hard probably last two years i've been taking caffeine pills in the morning yeah um but that also to be fair that i, I don't like coffee i don't like the taste of coffee i have a lot of coffee in the morning yeah so I, I don't drink coffee um because i don't like the taste of it so i take caffeine pills and each one of these little pills is like the equivalent of like two and a half cups of coffee or something right and i take a couple of these in the morning to like get through my fucking 6 a.m starts right I never had to do that before. Yeah. I I get it, though. I mean, like, sure. If you're going to live on planet Earth as a human being 
fucking use the uppers and downers at your disposal. Yeah, we have Why a bunch not? of fucking drugs. Like, Why not? Like, like, we've got, we've worked really hard to get to this point. <laughs> and just, just work it, man. Use, like, use the uppers, use the downers, like alcohol, use the drugs. Alcohol has been carefully crafted for like 20,000 years. To yeah, be and like it's, the perfect, like exactly what we want it to be. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and now it's easily accessible. We have yeah. tons of variety. You yeah. can pick your poison, literally. Because they'll pull out, they'll pull like urns of mead out from like Egyptian tombs that are yeah. literally like 10,000 years old. Right. Um, they found like, and I guess probably what happened was they had their honey out. It like rained on it, got bacteria in it um, and right. or yeast or whatever, and then fermented. And then they're like, well, we're going to die if we don't eat the fermented honey. Ate it, felt good. They're like, holy shit. <laughs> this shit's <laughs> like, good. <laughs> how do we replicate this, yeah, right? and figured it out. But we knew, like, well, fuck, I have a Guinness on the table here. Um, 1750. Founded 1759. Like, that's fucking 100 and, that's 100 years older than Canada. Like. That's great. Just this brewery, right? Yeah. Uh, what was it? I think Guinness. I just learned this fun fact the other day. Guinness signed a thousand year lease for the land it's on. Nice. Um uh for like twenty five dollars a year. Hmm. In like seventeen fifty nine. Right. Yeah. And uh to this day they're still paying twenty five dollars a year because it's in the contract. I think I saw um I watched a movie the other day. It was I don't know, it was based in kind of that era, seventeen hundreds in England. And uh, this guy... <laughs> Don't call Ireland England. Oh. <laughs> Did I? You, you just said it's based in England. <laughs> Don't call Ireland. And we're talking about Guinness. Oh. Yeah. No, it was... They're going to they're gonna get you. I didn't know Guinness was based... Come out, you black and tans. Come out and fight me like a man. <laughs> I didn't know it was based in Ireland. I'm extra sorry. Uh, no, it's the actually the Netflix... There you go. Uh, Netflix, Net, Netflix show Taboo with Tom Hardy. Uh, but like his father dies and he takes over his father's business and he has like a 125 year lease on this uh, spot in this like warehouse on the dock okay. or 50 year lease or something like that. Yeah. It's like, God damn. Can you imagine just inheriting a 50 year lease on a major port? Well, what I, um, the, um, the only thing I can think of well, I guess two things. One, Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Britain forced China to, or Japan. No, China. <laughs> that sounds bad. Racist. Um, I swear I'm just drunk. I'm not racist. I'll drink more and I'll believe you. Um, are you trying to take advantage? Anyway, I, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Off camera. <laughs> it's episode 69, baby. Oh, it is episode 69. What if the entire episode 69 is just us 69ing? <laughs> just kidding, but Just kidding. If? Cut just kidding. <laughs> just cut that all out. Mommy? Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. Um, sorry. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hong <laughs> Kong uh, was on a 99-year lease from to Britain. Mm-hmm. After they were like they won a war and then they're like give me Hong Kong for some reason. Um. Anyway, I didn't want to talk about that. I just thought about that. The thing I can think of is like um, our friend, my business partner has a cabin in a provincial park, and you can't own the land in a provincial park by law, so they do ninety nine year leases of the land. Yeah. Or hundred year leases of the land to build your cabin on. And then every twenty years or something they have to send an inspector in to make sure you like haven't fucked up and polluted the land or whatever. Yeah. But um yeah, so he can't actually own the land that the ca- that his cabin's on. You just have to keep renewing And there's a square uh there's a square footage limit of like uh they go by roof size. So you can be like multiple stories tall, but your roof can only be so and so big. What if I just don't have a roof? Uh, you're totally fine. There's no minimum, <laughs> just a maximum. <laughs> minimum roof size. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Good system, really good system. I mean, there's houses. Like, there's um, houses in Birdsale Park that are on that same idea. There's um, you used to pay um in France, I believe. You used to pay taxes based on the square footage that your house was covering. 
Right. So there's a bunch of fucking pictures of these super tall, narrow, sketchy looking houses. Yeah. Because they would build them on like eight feet. Right. Like but an then, eight foot wide thing. But then as it went up six feet, it would get wider and oh. then go up. But you would only pay what's for what's touching the ground. So the, fucking look up some of these pictures. It's fucking fascinating. There's like these like, it looks like a feat of engineering. It looks like these things are going to fall any minute, but it's like they're 500 years old. That's awesome. And then my other favorite is the guy. I think it's a museum now, but there's a house on this bridge uh, because it was a bridge between two counties in like England and uh, neither could charge them property tax. So he built a house on a bridge and right. like through some weird legal loophole, no one could charge him taxes. He's like, ha ha. I just well, live on this bridge now. Cause the two counties could never settle. The Whatever dispute, it was. Right? Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is, this is my spirit animal. That's these it. are, these are my ancestors. <laughs> like there's willows just bringing a fucking load of lumber onto the Osborne bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get me now. Um, and then it gets washed away because Manitoba. So every time we, uh, last night we were on a video call, me, you and a couple of our friends. Yeah. And, uh, JL went for a uh, two-hour rant about um, how we're all fucked. Um, climate change is irreversible. The topsoil is going to all die. Um, no one gives a shit about us. There's going to be food riots. Um, and we're basically going to spend the last few years of our life in, in, in suffering very like sooner rather than later. Yep. Favorite it's, guest of the pod, JL. Yeah, it was really, basically... Really sunshiny dude. Yeah, anyway, so he, he, and he finished his rant with saying, like, because you said something along the lines of, like, man, you're so, like, educated on, like, random, like, you're just generally knowledgeable. I want to, like, read more so I can be more generally knowledgeable. And he was like, don't. Don't do it. Because ever <laughs> since I learned about all this shit, I've been depressed. Yeah, it's hell. Yeah. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss, right? They say it. But anyway, so... Well, to be fair, I said I want to be more knowledgeable and then, like, named a few things I want to be knowledgeable in. yeah. And he's like, don't, it's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but uh, every night after we have a kind of conversation, like a dour conversation like that, I always go on Kijiji and start browsing for vacant land for sale <laughs> every time. And that's why I don't know if you saw the thing I sent. I have not looked at my phone today. Okay. It was like 2 a.m. last night, but whatever. So I sent, uh, there was, there's 81 acres for sale, about three hours out of the city, mm -hmm. 60 G's. Okay. Uh, you get the logging rights, mining rights, Ooh. Uh, and like mineral rights and whatever, everything else. Uh, the municipality that it's in, um, you don't need a permit to build. Nice. You just build a house or whatever. As long as it's a residence, you can build whatever you want. It doesn't have to be primary. Um, and then uh, what, what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, property tax for the entire 81 acres, 150 a year, $150. Yeah. Yeah. Does um, it have a road to it? Uh, no. <laughs> well, okay. T yeah. Uh, it's it's like, like on a mile road? It's 15 minutes off of uh, the number one highway, though. Oh, but it has like gravel road access. Uh, but non-maintained road. Right. So you, you seasonal, would need to like... Seasonal road. Uh, and you would need to like probably cut down trees to make it drivable. Right. It's like not really accessible, yeah. but 81 acres for fucking 60 Gs. Which is incredible. Is like a pretty good fucking price. Yeah. Um, and that's like, that. Uh, it was like Northwestern Ontario. Okay. That's 15 minutes from like the main artery that crosses Canada. Correct. Yeah. Um, so it was, so I was just looking at that and I'm like, uh, so obviously I sent it to Zach and he starts going <laughs> deep into it. Right. So he mapped it out on Google maps, but then he was also like, okay, how much, this is how he sounds. How much is, uh, like, how much could it possibly be to rent fucking logging equipment? Like, that's a thing. So we look it up. Not that expensive. You can yeah. you can fucking get backhoes and chainsaws and wood chippers and all that shit for, like, pretty cheap. Like, a G. Um, and then, like, between the six of us, like, me, you, Zach, Mitchell, JL, that's five of us, could probably clear out enough space like like it'd be a good like side project yeah you wouldn't have to go to the gym anymore oh for sure just go out there and cut trees right <laughs> like um but anyway like i like so 
that was just context. But like what I want to ask you in front of, cause we've talked about this before, but in front of our dear listeners, um, what are we like, do you think you have the physical capability to yes. like buy that kind of land and like build a house on it? Oh yeah, absolutely. So that's that's it's, a side project that we want to work on. I have the capability, it's just I don't have the means. So I think right now the the kind of I don't know if we've really spoken this, but I think the unspoken kind of deal like if me and Zach buy land, can you and JL and Mitch build a house on or a cabin on it? What's in it for me though? Well, you get the cabin. So we like we kind of go in we together. C- collaborate on a bug out. That's exactly what I'm bug saying. Out, yeah. Some bug out land. Correct. Yeah. 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 Because so you're kind of leaning into the whole prepper idea. So here's the thing. Land is only getting like is uh, appreciating. Yeah. There, no one can argue with that. Land is appreciating. You buy it in 50 years, it's worth more than you paid for it. 100. percent Yeah. Uh, Central Canadian land, especially as the world goes to hell because of climate crisis, um, this land is going to become more valuable. Yeah. And granted this 80 acres would not be uh, like crop, not really farmable, but this was just what I was looking at last night. I also want to buy like farmland, but, but so two things is that um, I can get an asset on my books right now on my personal books because I have very little personal assets and that's hurt me. Yeah. So having a personal asset would be good. Um, in the meantime, I'd like to buy something we could make some... Like, we were talking about maybe doing bison, like buying some bison, having a bison farm. Something like that. I mean, yeah, farming's a fuckload of work, but... But what I mean is, like, or at least the land... Like, in the meantime, while my land is appreciating, I could make money off the land as well. Or lease least, the land to a farmer. Yeah, you can make a small amount of money, cover the costs. At, That's what... I, cover the yeah. property tax and shit, right? That That's... That would be number two. And then number three, I would love to build a bug out cabin. Yeah. With like, you know, like Fort Gibraltar. Yeah. I want to build like fort walls out of trees. That'd be so funny. Fort walls out of trees and bones of your enemies. Well, and then here's, I was watching a documentary on Babylon and they built the tower of Babel without iron, like no tools. Yeah. Or like obviously tools, but no iron tools. Mm-hmm. And oh no, sorry, that was the Mayans. I also watched a uh, Machu Picchu documentary. They built those fucking castles, not castles, but like those. You know, you see Machu Picchu. It's like a stone carved in the fucking mountain. They built that without iron tools. Very slow. Well, no, uh, the entire Mayan empire only lasted like thirty years. I thought it was longer than no. that. No, uh, and then fucking. Uh, Spanish conquistadors. Fuck them. Uh, anyway, but uh, they built it without iron tools and without mortar. They built all these stone houses and shit. Yeah, that's incredible. Like, but so I'm watching this and I'm like, so Mayans building these stone or Babylon Babylonians building the fucking Tower of Babel or like even English colonizers in the 1600s coming to Canada and building like log cabins and shit, right? I think, do you think that us, my, our group of friends with the internet and modern tools is as capable of like Babylonians with no modern tools and no internet? Oh, we could make something dramatically better. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why don't we? <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, no, I think my, for, like I already have ideas coming to mind. Like if you, you put me in the fucking woods for a month, and I'll come up with something crazy. Like, especially because of what I've learned already about design and efficiency and all these different things that like, so that make buildings what they are. I, I was going to ask you, cause you bu- actually do build things. What do you think about like building like, okay. Well, like, first of all, what would you build a, like you build it out of wood probably? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, it all depends what your resources are. Uh, well, we I can, would, well, I can just, See, you know what's a great benefit? We can just go to fucking Rona and buy whatever <laughs> we want. No, that that's true. No, I think what I'm envisioning is um, a lot of concrete. Okay. And 
I, like I, again, it just totally depends on your resource what well, you okay, have available so to you. Here's the, here's the thing. I, I I think like I seriously are considering buying some land in the next like two years, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we could build like a temporary kind of thing. And then I like obviously one of my goals in the is I want to have like a bomb shelter type thing, like a luxury. Like what Post Malone has in the fucking Utah mountains, right? right. Like so, a fucking like, but that's in the future. But like, I want to buy something like pretty quickly. I think. So where my mind immediately goes is um, subterranean house. So where majority of the house is underground. What's the benefit of or that? at least half of it? Um, Isn't that sketchy? Well, no, I like you're I not. Guess we're in a basement. You're right not. Now. You're not underground. Like the roof would be at or above ground level so you still have windows and stuff yeah but yeah it's the same idea as a basement where uh your actual like floor level is below ground what's the benefit of that uh, a lot of uh energy it's energy efficiency essentially okay. so if you could build the structure subterranean and also the roof you literally cover the roof with dirt and grass so summertime it never gets hot in wintertime, it doesn't get as cold. So it's extremely easy to heat and really efficient to cool. And then what do you make the walls out of? Probably concrete. Yeah. Like, okay. that that's the best way. Like, because you've got to think about exposed to the elements, the if dirt, pour, the moisture. The... If you pour concrete yourself, is it expensive? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cause well, I mean, I yes and no. When the... we when we priced out a building for the vineyard, it was like $200,000. It was like two fifty. What two of fifty three hundred thousand dollars and like one hundred twenty five of that was just pouring the slab. Well, the, the the thing is, you're paying for there's steel in the slab, there's rebar, right? Okay. There's uh, the actual carpentry, there's the labor, there's the forming of it. Like there's, you can save a lot of money on that. The actual cost of concrete is expensive. Is it is and it isn't. I mean, it depends what you compare it to. It depends how you're building it to what spec. Like yeah. yeah. I mean, ideally, if you want to do concrete these days, you do with ICF with these like styrofoam forms. They have incredibly high insulation value. If you want to build something that's like really going to be efficient and last and be really awesome, you build it out of ICF, which, which is out of like really futuristic uh, spec of homes, which is where, you know, you can have a 3,000 square foot home where you can heat and cool it with a hairdryer and a, and a little fan. Yeah. So that's where my mind immediately goes because if you want to be out in the sticks, and you lose power, you, you want to be able to die. You don't want to die. You want to yeah. be like, oh, you light a little fire and you'll be okay. Yeah. So, and it's also great because it's it's low key and it can be, some, you can literally trip over your own front door yeah. and not know what's there. Okay. But, I like that. I like that. Because like, I, I see, here's that, my, here's that, my vision. That, that's what the, that's what the pioneers used. FYI, like the sod houses. Ever look through or walk through a sod house like at the Steinbeck? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We um, did that for school. Yeah. That same idea. Okay. Just modern. Um, so here's my kind of what I'm thinking over the next like five years, right? The five of us or whoever kind of go in together. We all get, we all like go evenly buy some land. Right. And then we have like, we build like a whole kind of like we each, we build like five, 500 square foot homes, like tiny homes Yeah. on the land. And then we also have like a communal, like chill out plays and then we just go there on the weekend to drink and make use of it yeah and if things go to shit then we go there to fucking hide yeah so this is shack plan with with friends (laughs) yes no i've never like i people i think i am one of the most consistent (laughs) like since i was a kid yeah, you're the same person. And I haven't really talked about this, the whole shack plan thing, but Zach and I, my business partner and I, have been friends for a long time uh, since school. And something that we had the plan to do, which we, we had like money set away for, like we made a separate bank account with and put money into this, was um, we were going to buy like an acre somewhere and then build a shack and just live off the grid basically. And we, we, this was like when we were 15 and because I was very disillusioned with like the same way I am now, I was disillusioned with the government and, and society. And I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to go build a unabomber shack in the fucking, in the woods. Um, but 
and then I was a political protester for a while. I was actually a left lefty um, political protester for a while there. But then what I, as I kind of matured, like I, I lived in a, in a tent um, across from the government buildings here in Winnipeg in the winter um, protesting with Occupy Wall Street. Um, and that was when I was like 14, 15. And as I matured, I kind of realized, okay, yeah, the government sucks. I hate them. I hate the ruling class, but I, I was mad at the wrong thing. I didn't actually hate capitalism. I hated like people that would use money to control me. So when I kind of figured out that I'm like, oh, I actually, I don't, I, I'm not pissed at capitalism. I'm not pissed at the system necessarily. I'm pissed at the government for being dicks. And pissed at losing. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to like get rich and do my own thing that way instead of like being a left leaning political protester. But so the shack plan kind of got thrown in the back burner, like my Unabomber shack in the fucking woods. But I've never like that. That was always part of my plan is I wanted to have it off grid. Because fuck them. Even though like our power's cheaper. And Zach's always like, oh, fucking solar panels. You won't even fucking like, it, it'll take 50 years before you fucking make like break even on them. It's like, that's not the point. Yeah, well. I, I want to own land. That conversation alone is changing. I mean, my my hydro bill just jumped by uh, like 20% last month. Do you have gas heating? Yeah. Uh, carbon tax. Yeah. Gas heating and gas water heater yeah that's carbon yeah it was, that was just the carbon tax april 1st love it um but uh what was i saying oh yeah like fucking i i don't yeah no i, I want to like own land in like my wife's name and not in my name you know that's like and then have like a fucking shit like building in the floor like you're talking about and like you know like fuck them i yeah i really I really, really want a subterranean. I want to have like design. I want to have I like it. I want to build a fort. I want to build like a fucking Fort Gibraltar. Google what that looks like. Fort Gibraltar, Manitoba. It's like this colonial fort with the fucking like sharpened tree trunks as a wall. Yeah. I want to have like that in the middle of nowhere, and then like have what looks like an ICBM from um, from above from satellites. Yeah. So that if the government's like, uh, and I'm like, I will nuke you. <laughs> <laughs> like, where did he get the uranium? It's what like, would they do? Um, like, they're like, we'll send the army if you don't pay your taxes. I'm like, I will literally set off a nuclear bomb. Just leave me alone. So you're just going to Waco it. But with a nuke? Could you imagine? What would they do? I don't know. Like, if I, I just had, if I had the ability, like, if I had an ICBM. If you had the nuke. Yeah. I mean, more damning would be I'll launch the nuke at Russia. <laughs> okay. And they'll see that it came oh, from here from Manitoba. <laughs> yeah. And then it's just the apocalypse. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, and then part of this kind of the shack plan has tied into my new newer plan, which is I would love to just buy up land in a rural municipality, and then have enough votes. That we can make one of our people the reeve. the reeve of that municipality. Absolutely. And then, like, incorporate a town, like, make myself the mayor <laughs> and just, like, fuck around. <laughs> like, just, just because, like, I, I've said fuck this. Fuck around in your little town with no people and no budget. Fuck it. Yeah. Well, I've said this before. I just want my Wikipedia page to make no sense. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, he started this winery, he started, like, crypto investing and then he was a mayor for a bit and then he like had a hip-hop album it didn't really make any sense and then he like wrote a book and it's like just like you're reading this you're like who the fuck is this guy like that's that's basically what i'm going for confusing and jarring yeah it's like what the fuck are we talking about that's that's kind of been my goal for a long time so i think that would like the rm plan is like a decent plan because there are municipalities in manitoba that the election was decided by like 60 people. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so here's the thing. We make, we build a bunch of tiny homes and we go, okay, you can come to the tiny home first year free. It just happens to be an election year. And you know who gave it to me? It gave that house to you. It was me, by the way, wink, wink and give 60 homes away and win the fucking election. Yeah. You just well, start a cult. 
Basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. Great idea. No, and then I get bored after four years and leave. Yeah, and then the cult continues. Fuck it. No, I think um, if we go through all the trouble of building subterranean tiny homes and whatever off the grid shit, we'll just Airbnb it. That's actually see, see, that shit does really see, well. Here's how we're com- we're combining our communist bug out plan with our <laughs> capitalist minds. An- yeah, our anarchy with what we live in. Because we're 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 adaptable, right? And we'll adapt to whatever. Well, human beings are the most adaptable, right? Yeah. People can well, get you. People can get used to fucking anything. And and here's the thing: is like I I I I feel like my like I I played a lot of Fallout and stuff. And I like the post-apocalyptic kind of idea. And I think, like, my post-apocalyptic job... I know all, like, communists are always like, I would design the fucking uniforms. It's like, no, <laughs> please face wall. But I, <laughs> I, I think that my post-apocalyptic job would absolutely be, like, tending bar. Yeah. Would be, like, making beer out of the back and fucking having a bar. Because that needs to keep happening. Tending bar with whatever can be fermented. Yeah, ex- which is pretty much what I do now. Yeah. But, like, I think because every... You need it. Like, every community has a fucking bar. This is how we're, we're, we're... Humans are social people, and drinking is social. Even the planes have bars. The boats... Wow. ...have bars. Wow, you're right. <laughs> the outposts oh, I, dude, have I saw, bars. I saw, um, I saw a TikTok that was... Uh, he's, like, on a private plane... Like, uh, you know, like those private, like Air Dubai, you have the bedroom, you have like yeah. a bedroom. So he's like, he's, he's like doing a selfie video and he's like, oh, you guys are flexing a uh, flying private. Watch this. And he fucking opens the door to the cabin, walks through. He's like, here's my office. Here's my bedroom. He's like, I have an executive plane. Uh, it's like seven rooms. Right. Conference room with like a bunch of chairs. He has an office with a computer, has a bedroom and a kitchen all on a plane. Yeah. He's like, step the fuck up with your private planes. <laughs> like it's it's like, oh god. Executive. Talk plane. about excessive. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> Jesus wild. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It was Who wild. needs that? It's wild. I mean, I guess at a certain level of your traveling around it'd be nice to have just kind of your comforts of home to be mobile. Yeah, it's, depending it's like, on how much you're it's, flying, right? It's like an actor having a million dollar um R V. Yeah. Uh yeah. but Jesus Christ. The carbon footprint of rich people <laughs> is incredible. <Yeah. coughs> well, I saw like uh, if you have more than two thousand flight hours in a year, you should just buy a plane. Yeah, yeah, it's no, more, absolutely. It's more cost effective than chartering. I think at at one point when we were spending so much money flying around to doing seminars and stuff like that, we were talking about like we were at the verge of uh, being able to justify just chartering. Yeah. Well, uh, chartering actually ends up being cheaper. In a lot of cases. uh, In a lot of cases. Um, Especially if you're bringing so many people. Like, chartering a plane from a big hub to a big hub is, like, five grand. Yeah. Like, from, like, Vegas to fucking L.A., if you, and so if you're bringing, you know, how much is a fucking flight? 300 bucks, 500 bucks, whatever. So if you're bringing that many people on your team, it like it's cost effective. Yeah, especially if you're paying like overweight fees and all these extra yeah. cargo fees and yeah. so on. Exactly, yeah. 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 So what you're saying is we need to a plane for our bug out plan. I think getting a little plane. Well, I've got one degree separation access to a plane, so that helps. Well, pilot at least. Yeah. We could make a runway. My brother in law's a pilot. I'm yeah. probably I'm probably getting my pilot's license. Yeah. More li- I... more likely than not. That'd like cool. in the next decade probably I'll get my pilot's license. That'd be cool. I'd come fly with you. Yeah. Um I I th- I love flight. I think it's so cool. Like Zach's afraid of flying. But I think mm. it's one of the coolest things we've ever done. Yes. It's just like being on a pl- it's like holy shit. Like yeah, we're, we're defying fucking nature. Like God's like, you can't fly. And we're like, fuck you bitch. And we're just like, we can fly now. Right. They fly now. They fly now. It's a star Wars reference. Um, but I think it's just one of the coolest things. I love being on planes. I love looking like, out the window. One of, one of our fucking clients. I just love this. Has a helipad in his front yard. So he can get to his cabin faster or wherever yeah. the fuck he wants to go. I guess carbon um, footprints are rich people. Yeah. And, the other day I was at um, my girlfriend's dance recital 
in and someone comes in on a fucking plane but fuck nowhere uh, manitoba like we're talking literally nowhere like cook's <laughs> creek like you blink and you miss the whole town shout out cook's creek kimchi yeah does markets with me amazing um <clears throat> someone flew a private helicopter to the dance recital yeah that's so funny it was like a, a black helicopter to like a probably a six-seater yeah had like kind of the bubble style cockpit a flame paint job on the side <laughs> yeah you sent me a nice picture. flame paint job is like <clears throat> all blacked out with the, the with the rotors and everything this thing's about the size of a school bus like pretty big machine and yeah they just like landed like 20 feet next to the parking lot and just like rolled in to enjoy the dance recital for Love it. presumably their grandkids or kids or whoever Love it. like holy shit like in our province specifically, we have a lot of private flyers. If you look up in the sky anywhere close to an airport in like a summer afternoon, you'll see dozens and dozens and dozens of private planes. I was going to say, I love the idea of flight. I think it's really cool. If I die in a plane crash, fuck it. So be it. Statistically, you're not going to die in a plane crash. Like, it's very, very yeah. unlikely. Um, but I either I'm not smart enough or just don't have the pay. I couldn't learn all the fuck. I just couldn't. I know so, myself. I couldn't be disciplined enough. So here's something that um, this summer, if you want, so my brother-in-law is now the um, legal custodian of uh, what they call a Nan Chang. Okay. Which is a... Sounds racist, but go ahead. A 1980s, 90s era training bomber plane from the Chinese military. Okay. So it looks like it's from the 40s. It looks yeah. like a World War II like bomber okay uh he is the custodian of this plane now okay because the pilot has like uh an ankle or a leg issue and cannot operate the pedals anymore because okay. it's full body whatever there's access pedal, to be a, pedals on a plane yes that's how you, even, that's how you control the rudder i didn't even know that uh so <laughs> the the guy who owns the plane really rich dude yeah who's now moving to california uh can no longer take care of or fly this plane so my brother-in-law is the caretaker of it so he can take us up in a weird Chinese plane. Yes. I'd go, yeah. It's what they train their fighter pilots on. Yeah, I 100% I'd go. Yeah. Are there so guns he... on it? Uh, no. We should swoop the fucking police station. Yes, 100%. Perfect. No, it's it's a fucking cool plane. Yeah. Uh, I, Nan Chang, if you want to Google it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm down. I, I fucking I love that shit. Yeah, super, super sweet. Cool. Um, yeah, I, uh, I actually just watched a TikTok of a girl who uh, moved from, like, one coast to the other, um, but flew her, like, little one-seater plane mm -hmm. the entire way. So cool. Yeah. I mean, he's his dad also has a plane, and we could... Actually, reasonably Zach's... We could reasonably go places, like, in within Manitoba, for sure, but, I mean, the tank's really small. You can only go a few yeah. hundred miles. Well, it'd just be fun to yeah. go up. It is. Um, Zach's grandfather has a pilot's license because you have to fly once a year. Or once every three years? Yeah. I think it's once every year. You have to f do one registered flight or they'll take your license away. Mm -hmm. Because you need to keep up the practice. Or and whatever. a physical. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny is I like... like I'm like, yeah, I'll go up in this sketchy Chinese plane with you. Um, but like skydiving, nothing for me. Oh, I'm 100% good yeah, at skydiving. Yeah, I would not. I'm not. That's not my thing. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. do it. I would not. Yeah. Not my thing. How do you think you're going to get to the shack? You got to skydive out of the Cessna. Well, you know what's funny is like um, Margaret, who we just had on the last episode, she came skiing with us and uh, she like failed horribly the first day and then didn't ski the rest of the weekend. South Africans, famously not skiers. No, but she's like, let's go skydiving. Yeah. And I'm like, you were scared to go skiing. <laughs> like, how is this safer? <laughs> like, Honestly skydiving is probably about the same safety level as skiing i just not my thing i would get no nothing out of that i mm. just i'm not doing it i'll do it yeah i know you will <laughs> um no incentive yeah i it's yeah not my thing i don't know i don't want you what about that uh jump off a fucking cliff with a bungee cord i'm a little more hesitant about the I bungee cords i'm not doing that shit either. because the only uh, the only reason about bungee cords is like I don't want to get tangled up in that thing, but while I'm falling. Sure, that's what I'm worried about. 
You ever see those though, those fucking people that do it though? They jump off this fucking bridge into a gorge, like yeah, yeah. No. Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah no, I, I love. No, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think I would do it, at, or like those. <laughs> my favorite is the giant rope swings, where it's oh yeah, janky yeah, yeah. and like set up by some like just some climbers. Yeah, or some, some like people. Indonesian fucking like mountain guy. <laughs> like, yeah, and you just like yeah. jump off a cliff and you're on a rope, not a bungee cord. Like it's not stretchy, yeah. and you just fucking go on this yeah. giant no, swing. No, I'm okay. <laughs> I don't have a problem with heights at all, but that's like not, nah. <laughs> not. Would you go zip lining? Really high wire zip lining? I've gone zip lining before. Uh, when I was in Quebec, I did like it was wall climbing, and you would climb to like the top of the trees, and then you would zip to another tree. Yeah, that was fun. Okay, there's a really good one. Uh, probably about thirty minutes from the vineyard. I feel like. I have more control doing that than I do like jumping out of a plane though. Yeah. No, it's a lot of fun. Right. I don't know. Cause I feel like I wouldn't, I'm not scared to like go like mountain climbing. I've done that before when I was in Wyoming. Yeah. We were climbing up like fucking 90 degree inclines and I was wearing dress shoes. <laughs> um, I have a great video. Um, I don't know where it is anymore. I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. I not promising anything though, but there's, <laughs> I'm like, so my friend David, who lives down there in Wyoming, he's like a, like ahead of me, climbing. We're out climbing up a fucking incline. Zach has just left. He didn't want to do it. So David's going up, and then I'm like taking a step. I'm like, look, I'm fucking rock climbing in dress shoes, and I'm wearing dress shoes. And then he goes like rock, and because he like dislodged something, and I'm like up, oh! and then like giant fucking rock falls beside me. I'm like, this is not safe. And I didn't have traveler's insurance. Like I'm in Amer- I'm in a different country. Yeah. That you have to pay for healthcare. <laughs> yeah. Drive me back to Canada. I'm bleeding out. Like, and this is just not. Yeah. Like, just get me over the fucking border. I'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah. like, just... Can you imagine just calling an ambulance from Manitoba? Me and be like, can you pick border. me up in Minneapolis? Yeah. <laughs> like, so, no. That was fun. But yeah, I have like, I, I yeah, I think that's fun. But I just, like, something like skydiving, nothing for me. I would not. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, we should transfer here into the last segment that we call tip of the week, tip of the week, tip, 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 of, the, tip of the morning. Um, yes. The part of the show, <laughs> the part of the show where uh, Tyler and I give you a business or life tip that we are currently going through in life. And my tip of the morning is... I don't know, buy some fucking land, right? Yeah. No, it's okay. I guess like more generally, I had a thought that gave me anxiety. Like, oh, the fucking climate change is going to kill us all. What do I do? I started looking at like land and then I'm like, this is even expensive. <laughs> like I could definitely do this. And I didn't like go out and purchase land. I didn't go like, but like something was giving me anxiety. So I like, did something to like alleviate that anxiety. We're like, Oh, I'm going to be Make fucked. A plan. In... Yeah, yeah. Basically like I'm going to be fucked in 10 years because of climate change. Oh, it's not even fucking expensive to go deal with climate change. So I don't even know how to phrase that in like a tip kind of way, but well, let me, let me continue on that. Cause I was going to say literally the same thing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so fuck you for going first. Um, no, I was going to say lean into your anxiety and you know what? People do crazy shit all the time. True. And uh, if you want to really lean into the nihilism, which I mean, do or don't, but it's the best way to live. Because again, we are insignificant. We're a species that's a blip in the galaxy and so on. Zoom out as far as you want. Do whatever you want and don't be afraid to be a meme. To be a fucking uh, stereotype. Oh, buy Twitter. Yeah, but buy Twitter. Be a meme. If you have something that's stressing you the fuck out, like existentially, I'm talking about existential dread here. I don't mean just like, oh, this is something that's kind of stressing me out. I mean, like, this is something that is debilitating to all of your life decisions. Just go lean into the solution of that. See where it goes. Fucking follow that, follow that rabbit trail. Because... You know, what's the worst case? You go buy some land and you die out there, I guess? Shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you could go die out there, for sure. But, I mean, the odds are pretty low. You can still call Search and Rescue and they'll come drag your ass stars. out of the woods. Yeah, call Stars. The Mennonite... What are they called? 
the Mennonite 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 uh, Aquatic Rescue Team Mart. <laughs> I don't think that's what it was. But the Marts. They do exist. Yeah. Anyways, the Mennonites, the Amish will come get you. Uh, somebody will bail your ass out. How do you call that's, them? How do you contact the Amish to come save you? Well, you call nine one one, and then they call the Amish. How do they call them? They send somebody down. <laughs> they have a smoke signal. Yeah. No. They have. There's a phone they don't own, but they answer it. I don't think it's. What are you talking about? I know the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> trust trust me, I know the Amish. Um, no, lean into the anxiety. And in a small... Like, for example, if you're stressed out about, like, food insecurity... Um, Grow some garden. Watch an episode of Alex Jones. Of course. And, the like, the food bucket that they advertise at the end of, like, one year's supply of food that's, like, in a five-gallon pail. Just buy one of those. The fact that I have no idea what you're talking about means that... You're crazier than I. <laughs> Bu- just buy a bucket of food. It's like, just buy MREs. Just, just exactly. It's just survival MREs, dehydrated foods. They taste like garbage. Apparently, they're the worst quality no, MREs hey, you can buy. Hey Tyler, nothing sriracha can't fix. True. So <laughs> buy buy the food bucket. Cover it and in then sriracha. also a bucket of sriracha. <laughs> so you have a bucket of sriracha and you get a bucket of food, and then a bunch of Brita filters. And they go in the woods and just see how that goes. For yeah, you. like do anything, like, and if, see what's scarier. The, I guess see what's scarier, Trump or the woods. <laughs> and you're gonna you're gonna fuck around and find out real quick. The woods are a lot fucking scarier than Donald Trump. The guy's a bitch compared to the woods. So just lean into it. Follow follow your anxiety and see where it takes you. Because I think uh, I think it's healthy for people to fuck around and and just kind of find out instead of just stress about stuff. So. Go out and do something crazy, do something weird. Thanks, Tyler. That's um, sage advice. Thank you. Um, thank you for listening. I'll call me on this point. Um, episode. <laughs> Take forty-seven. <laughs> thank you for listening. I'll call me on this point. Episode sixty-nine. Nice. Um, we will see you. I guess next time, right? <laughs> I was gonna say something stupid. <laughs> Sheesh! <laughs> Alcohol beyond this point podcast. This isn't two podcasters talking business. This is two business guys trying to podcast.